another day, another video. Now today's video is either how I get out of a rut or how I get re-motivated and re-inspired. Honestly, these things play hand in hand. Now I do tend to go in more ruts during the school season because I am definitely under much more pressure. <laughs> But nonetheless, this can include even like creative blocks, which I also do experience. Wow, she said, well balanced. <laughs> but it's just something that happens. Either you're denying it's not happening and then it just, you blow up or you just accept the fact you're in a rut and roll with the punches because at this point, that's all you can really do. But this is what I usually do and it's kind of like a little routine I've got going down because it just happens so often. I don't know if I should be proud of that or not but here we are. <laughs> Hopefully this can help someone out there. Now the first thing is just go with it. It is a rut or you are going through this time period for a reason. I've tried pushing back those things even when it comes to emotions and usually what tends to happen is you bottle it up and then you explode or you just keep pushing it back, pushing it back and then you hit even a bigger blockade. So it's better to just try to pass this blockade appropriately before bigger issues start to roll around. So the first thing I usually tend to do is I wallow around. I allow it to happen, I just go through with the emotions, you know, it just, it doesn't look cute, but it happens. And then once I'm done, and I say it's time to get up because this is not it. Then I do some reflecting. Now, personally in my life, what I find that helps is acknowledging what is current in my life, what is past in my life, and what I want my life to be. Now, I am a big dreamer. I love to dream, but I can be on the lazier side sometimes where I don't put into action. So what I will do is I will actually take, I will write down steps that I can do to achieve said goals. Now these goals might be five years in the future, but there's always something I can be doing right now to go towards it and make it steps that are reasonable, not outrageous. Now, personally, I found that quality over quantity. Now, with being a big dreamer, I do need, I do sometimes get off track where I can dream about all these things that I can make happen, but I don't have the time nor do I have the resources. So, I want to be intentional where I'm putting my energy. So, I only put a couple things that I know are some, there are things I definitely want to achieve. And I know I can achieve for sure. Now, I'm not saying these can't be big things. Definitely two of them right now are very big things that I'm aspiring. But I am taking adequate steps to make that happen. So when it comes to a rut, I do find that for some people, this might be manifesting. To other people, this might be reflecting. For me, this might just be talking with faith. I just find that reconnecting and grounding yourself is a big, big, big thing that you should be doing during this time period because I feel like when we're in ruts or when we're feeling overwhelmed, we're just not feeling motivated. I feel like a lot of the times it's because we're not grounded and this can look like a lot of things to a lot of people. For me, being grounded is... I know I have to go through this. Why am I going through this? And how can this help me go through anything in the future? Or how can I take this lesson and go to the next step? Does that make sense? Now, a big thing when it comes to quality over quantity is also relationships. Now, when I'm in ruts or when I'm not feeling motivated, I do look around me because I want the people around me to push me. I want the people around me to motivate me. I want to look at them and be like, I want that for myself. And I can say confidently, the people around me right now are people that I aspire to be, that I'm inspired by. It's just, it's very... It's very humbling to look at people who are doing great things for themselves and even though it might be 
it might not be something I personally want for myself. Nonetheless, seeing the efforts they're putting, the work that they're putting in is inspiring. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it puts me in awe sometimes. So I would definitely say, look at the people around you and see if they are people that you want to surround yourself with. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't have friends that you can't hang out with or you shouldn't have friends that you can't confide in, but maybe you don't really aspire to be them or you're not inspired by them. But one way or another, you should be inspired by the people around you because they, you don't have to be inspired by just what they're doing. For some people, it might be their emotional intelligence. For some people, it might be their spirituality. It can vary, but at the end of the day, I feel like the per the people around you should be able to, should propel you in one way, shape, or form. Now, it doesn't have to be directly. It can be indirectly. It doesn't have to be in the sense where they're telling you, you should be doing this. It can just be them doing their thing and you just looking at that and being like, I want so I want that. I want to be hardworking like that. And someone you can communicate with very well. It's these type of things can be it's very abstract because it looks different to each person now for me when i'm talking about these things i want people who are in tune with their faith who have high emotional intelligence who are hardworking, driven these are the people i want to be surrounded by and i am and another thing is when it comes to quality over quantity with relationships, you can be lonely and be in a crowd of people that you call your friends and you can also be alone without anyone around you. Now, I want you to really think about that. I've stumbled upon this recently and it took me not only a minute, a couple of days to think about and really let it sink in. There were times where I've been surrounded by numerous people and I felt alone. And there are some times where I've been surrounded by numerous people and I felt lonely. And there are other times where I've been alone with my thoughts and in both situations, I didn't like either. And the way I've done it now is I definitely have a smaller group of people, but these are people that I can reach out to anytime. I know that they have my best interest at heart when they talk to me, when we communicate, when we hang out. It's very enjoyable. I'm very happy. And I still have days where I definitely feel alone, but that's something that's more within myself that I'm always working on. And it doesn't always have to do with the people around me. Does that make sense? So that is something that I found really interesting. And that's something I've picked on, up on recently. And when I'm going through times where I'm not feeling motivated or inspired, these type of things and going back to these people and talking with them actually re-inspires me or re-motivates me so that's why i really want to highlight the quality over quantity because it can apply to many aspects in your life and i feel like we should just we want more for ourselves you know level up 2022 <laughs> now to the next one so the next one is help people help you now this can look like once again, it can come in many shapes and forms. This can go from a random act of kindness. Now, I work in a grocery store. I'm a customer service worker. I've seen so many people just do random acts of kindness, and it makes the person who's receiving it go into tears. It brings laughter. It brings joy and even being a bystander, it literally makes my day watching these things. I can be having a horrible shift and just one of these interactions will be the highlight of my day and the highlight of my shift. Now, I find personally when I'm involved in these acts of kindness, whether it's from the receiving end or from the giving end, one thing remains true is there is this sentiment and there's the this happiness that stays with you there are times even to this day where i can recall from a couple of years ago random acts of kindness and it just warms my heart thinking about it because there is good at the end of the day and just having that in the back of my mind does 
does repel negative thoughts because I know at the end of the day there is good so I can't always be thinking about bad because I've always been told ever since I was little there are people who have it worse than me and this can sound like oh your problems are not big but I always took it in the sense that have gratitude for what you have because there's someone out there who doesn't have that there's someone out there who unfortunately isn't as well off as you and even back then even when we weren't as well off as other people I can say with guarantee I was still happy and that's something that's always followed me because I know with what I have I'm happy and the gratitude that I have is so extensive that just thinking of things like that will take me out of the rut or it'll take me out of that negative cycle that I can go into sometimes because you guys there's so much good in this world there's so much good you're surrounded by but it, honestly all it takes is you to just open your eye and just look around and sometimes we're too I can say with confidence I can be very selfish <laughs> with my thoughts in the sense that if I'm feeling something I'll just take myself down that rabbit hole and fill myself with these negative thoughts about myself and forget that all it takes is for me to just look up, look around me and the good and the happiness that I'm surrounded by, it would have been enough for me to begin with before I even spiral down. I don't know how to explain it, but when you look around and you see good and you see positivity, it's much easier for you to have positive thoughts and feel good. But when you are surrounded by negative thoughts, it's easier for you to fall into those into that cycle. So that's to say that sometimes asking for help isn't a bad thing and sometimes giving help or just even doing something that's so minute like smile at someone it's not that hard say thank you when someone opens the door like I feel like nowadays it's so easy for us to dismiss these small actions that we're missing out on more just by doing that just by dismissing those things we're missing out on an interaction that could have made our day if I could just look up from my phone sometimes and just see or like look around me kids playing elderly people being sweethearts like there's so much good there's so much happiness sometimes all it takes is just look up from your phone i feel like nowadays we're so plastered on our phone and it's so easy to be entertained by our phone that we tend to forget that there's so much going around us and there's so much more to our life than just a screen <laughs> I know this is like a little rant but I felt the need to say this because I am a victim of it myself I love my device I find such entertainment in it such joy I'd be seeing that like I'd be scrolling on TikTok and it's not great but I can definitely say with confidence the days when I'm just looking up when I'm not on my phone that often are days that I enjoy that much more and I just love <laughs> Now, I would definitely say spread kindness, spread love, and what you put out is what you will receive. I truly believe in that, and I think that way for positive stuff and negative stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> as long as you're putting out good, like, good energy, like, positivity, that stuff you'll receive for the most part. Now, that's not to say that there's not exceptions in this world, that bad things can happen to good people I'm not trying to dismiss any of that but I'm just saying the general theme is that put out what you want put out because that's what you're gonna receive so if you want to have good interactions you need to play a hand in it you need to maybe sometimes go out of your comfort zone now this goes back to the dreaming as I'm a big dreamer I truly believe in this. Visualize what you want to actualize. Now, that is very heavy from the get-go, but let me break it down. Some people will call this manifestation. Some people will call this bringing to fruition. I call it the latter. Um, I truly believe that if you want something to happen, you need to take 
not only the steps to make it happen but you need to act like it's going to happen and it's happening now this might be this might be similar to the phrase fake it till you make it i don't entirely believe in that but the premise i believe in so i think the concept of fake it till you make it i agree with you need to act like you already have that job. You need to act like you already are in that goal because only then will you realize what it takes to get there, what it's going to be like, and how you're going to feel when you're there. If you're doing that and you're not feeling happy, then it might be a sign that this might not be for you. If you're doing that and it's just there's something off about it you might need to reflect and take a couple steps back and see why it looks like that so that's what i mean when i say visualize visualize what you want to actualize it's more of laying out the base and then taking that base and rolling with it this is not oh this might happen in a couple years so let me just take the steps no no, no. you want to Act like you're there because you want to see what it's going to look like, feel like, and you want to see what steps you're going to have to really take for you to get there. And I honestly feel like putting yourself in the position of whatever goal you're trying to achieve, it puts you in the mindset of the work, it puts you in the mindset of the motive, like it puts you, it makes you much more motivated because you're propelled to be like, oh, if I want this to happen, like there, there's, this is no, there's no games here. You got to reel it out this is it's time to go so i feel like for me it definitely gets me out of like my laziness and it also gets me out of just that dreaming aspect because as i said before it's easy for me to dream and i do dream a lot but i would say definitely my personal dilemma is it's easy for me to dream but once it's time for me to actually put that into action i'm not there i'm gone i don't like doing it and unfortunately it's been a cycle and now that i've realized it i'm definitely acknowledging the fact that i do it and i'm working towards it so anyone out there who's with me i feel you you gotta start somewhere okay now when it comes to dreaming i want to say this no dream is too small now i've been so blessed where i've literally seen my parents come from nothing and make everything the fact that i'm standing in this house is amazing we went from a small apartment to this now i can say with confidence from seeing how my mom's work seeing how my dad is like seeing that is so inspiring seeing their work ethic even like my friends seeing their work ethic and seeing that they're trying to achieve their dreams is something I always talk about with a smile because it gives me continued awe. They are like my biggest inspirations because I've grown up with it. I've seen that progression from when I was small to now at 20 years old and seeing where I am, seeing where they are, where they brought us to. And it's just, oh, it's so awe-inspiring. So that is where no dream is too big comes from because seeing all of that has made me realize that you can really reach for the stars like you could really if you wanted to but are you taking the steps to do it now it's great to dream and i am a big fan of dreaming but you need to have something you can't just dream and seeing them take the appropriate steps to take seeing them make the fall seeing them get up again it's made me like it's it's so inspiring because just thinking of that not only makes me smile but a lot of times that's all it took that for me to get out of my rut that's all it took to, for me to get remotivated just taking those steps back and looking at my life and then seeing the progression from then to now like it's just so crazy to me that how far that not only they've gone they've taken us it's just oh, crazy so that is where no dream is too big i am a big fan of dreaming i am a big person on planning thereof and i have big goals and you know what i am not ashamed to say i know damn heck i'm gonna make most of it <laughs> with the exception of a few because you know what 
if it's not in God's plan, I'm not going to force it. <laughs> if it's not in God's plan, it's not in God's plan because I also believe in that. I'm very faith happy. <laughs> like, put a little realism in that, you know. <laughs> this one has to be my favorite and honestly, a lot of these tie into each other. Love, love is the last one. This is funny coming from someone who's single, you know. Uh, cute, love, love. But this one can mean so much more. I can say with confidence all the relationships I have now, whether it's family, friends, anyone, I love them. And I know for the most part they love me, and if they don't, they have to. <laughs> there are no options. Once you get involved with me, there's no other. <laughs> But yeah, I love love. So love love can mean the romantic sense where it's, you know, lovey-dovey whatnot. But I also mean it in any relationship you have, even with coworkers. When you truly have appreciation, gratitude, when you have respect, loyalty, like having those things propels any relationship you have to so many more levels when you're more open with a person i learned last year and this year that being open with people is can be times what makes or breaks a relationship or what propels your relationship to new levels just love love also means valuing the relationships you have and it means appreciating what you have, appreciating the people around you, appreciating for who they are, not for who you want them to be, appreciating what they come with and what you come with in a relationship, appreciating what you give and take in relationships, appreciating everything. <laughs> and it also means love yourself. Love, love doesn't only extend to the people around you, it also extends to yourself. Give yourself that pat on the shoulder. Give yourself that TLC. Because you know what? You deserve it. You didn't do nothing today. You deserve the TLC. Because at the end of the day, we deserve it. <laughs> love, love is loving who you are, who you're going to become, and who you were. Because you have to acknowledge the past you to live the current you and to create the future you. poet <laughs> but i have realized that the phrase love love is what honestly has created the strongest bonds and built my confidence to no other <laughs> but i can say i can say with confidence that all the people around me love me and all the people around me i love and I love myself, you know, I love where I am, I love this, I love the fact that I'm doing this. It's a courage, y'all. <laughs> but I love where I am right now. It might not be where I planned to be initially, but nonetheless, I'm here, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to work through it, I'm going to acknowledge everything I have. And at the end of the day, a rut is a rut. It's just a period of time where you're not feeling your best or it's a period of time where you just can't think. It's just a period of time. It's not going to be forever. And I can say times where I've been like down or I've been lacking, not motivated, all it took was me to think about these things and genuinely reflect on it and I've gotten out of it. I realized that having gratitude is what has brought my life the most happiness because gratitude can go into so many levels. It can funnel into appreciation. It can funnel into love. It can funnel into honesty. It can funnel to self-love. <laughs> Me running out of words to say. But yeah, that is what I would do if I was in a rut and what I always do when I am in a rut. These do happen quite frequent, but with time I am better prepared and I can say with the utmost confidence 
that this is what works for me now. This is what I do to get out of my ruts. This is what I do to re-inspire myself. That's probably not a word now that I think of it, but that's what I do to inspire myself again or motivate myself again. And I will continue to do it once I figure out something else or once I find something else that works for me, then I'll add it in and I'll probably make a new video. <laughs> but yeah, that's the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I do want to say that you're loved and you're you for a reason. A lot of times back in, back in the day, I didn't appreciate who I was and that would propel me into these ruts. It would propel me into this cycle of losing motivation much more easier. But you're going through what you're going through for a reason. You are the person you are for a reason. It's not always great to try to be someone else because you're not that other person. It's not always great to go down on yourself because you only got you at the end. So, and me. So if you want to text me, just hit up my socials <laughs> and we can talk. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see more, I'll have a couple videos linked down below that are similar to this one. And if you want to see more of me, I also have my socials, which will also be linked down below. I'm most, inst I'm most active on Instagram. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.